Have you ever seen someone wearing one of these and wonder what it is? No, this isn't a cochlear implant or a, some kind of special headset. This is a bone anchored hearing aid. And this is the story of how it became and still is in 2023, a great piece of tech that helps many people to hear again. In simple terms, the human brain can hear because our ears are equipped with two sections. The conductive system, that's the ear canal, the eardrum and the hearing bones behind. And the microphone system, if you like, that's the cochlea and the vestibulocochlear nerve. Now, if the conduction system didn't work properly for any reason, then you would still be able to hear, but likely you would only really hear loud voice in a very quiet room. Now, there are a number of different things that might cause the conduction system to fail in the ear. It might be something that you were born with, or it might be caused by chronic ear infection or skin disease that causes irreparable damage to that conductive system. And sometimes, despite a surgeon's attempts at reconstructing everything, we simply fail in being able to restore conduction of sound from the ear canal through to the inner ear. Now, for hundreds of years, actually, it's been known that if you could vibrate sound directly into the bony skeleton, you can actually bypass the conduction system altogether and get sound straight to the cochlea without any reduction in signal. But it wasn't until the late 1970s in Sweden when not these guys, but this guy, Dr. Anders Telström, thank you for the music, figured out that the titanium implants being used in dentistry could actually be attached to a microphone and used to deliver sound to the inner ear in this way. By 1987, the first commercially available bone anchored hearing aid was developed. And by 1997, there were 5,000 users worldwide. And by 2007, there were 50,000 users worldwide. But it's fair to say that this was by no means a perfect solution. The procedure needed a general anesthetic, typically two operations, significant removal of skin, hair and fat. That hair wouldn't regrow and many recipients did struggle with infections around the scar site that never really settled down. So yes, this was still a major life-changing piece of tech for many people that helped them to hear again where they wouldn't have otherwise had access to good sound. But because of all the issues with infections, etc., it was still an option that many people chose not to take. Within our profession, the Baja would sometimes be nicknamed and coined the scabby screw, the bolt in the head, the Frankenstein operation. And many ENT doctors chose not to even refer patients to have this as an option. And many patients even decided that they would rather go with poor hearing than have a device like this. Fast forward, however, to 2012, and there was a major breakthrough in the technique. The implant materials had become more refined, and it became clear that it was possible to install these implants without all that significant soft tissue reduction. There was now no need for permanent loss of hair, and the operation could be done through a much smaller incision in a much shorter time, and because of this, the patient could even be awake and recover very quickly. Now we were able to get cosmetic results like this with really good hearing, and slowly and slowly, the awareness grew about what this could achieve, and referrals and numbers being implanted have been increasing ever since, to the point in 2016, where it became fully commissioned on the NHS to be able to have both ears implanted. It is, though, fair to say, that despite these advances, there are still a number of patients who continue to get problems with infection from that scar site. If they're hearing really well from the implant, then a lot of that can be managed with creams. But once or twice a year, we do have to sadly end up removing these implants for those problems. And so fast forward to six months ago, and we're now able to do this operation without an incision at all, just through a skin punch. And I'm gonna show you that operation now. Okay, so this is incision-free Baja, let's go. And this is using Oticon's mono technique. It's worth mentioning that the patient is fully awake. And after prepping the skin, we measure the skin depth, and that helps us to decide what size of abutment we're gonna install using the indicator provided. We then inject local anesthetic, usually one cartridge of Ligdespan is enough, and then follow up with a hole punch down to the musculoperiosteal layer. Through that, we're using a rasp to clear the musculoperiosteal layer from the base, and then using this special cannula to um, put down to the bone and let it sit in the natural position. Irrigation is really important. Set the drill speed to 2000 RPM, and we're using this special drill to go in and out within four seconds, not longer, whilst using lots of irrigation and then suctioning the bone chips away. We then use the picker upper tool and change the torque to 40 newton centimeters and then pick up the appropriate sized Baja fixture and abutment complex and gently thread it into the bone making sure that you're perpendicular to the bone that's been drilled. 
And that's it. That's an on-table, very neat appearance. And follow it up with a healing cap, which stays on for a week. So that's incision-free Baja in 2023. It's barely even an operation anymore. And more so, very much a day case procedure with a very quick recovery. We now also have magnetic versions of this kind of technology available for those that don't want any metal showing through the skin. And you can let me know if you would like another video where I can explain why you would choose one over the other.